Hello and welcome to the fourth section of this tutorial, Add Rich Features to Your Application. In this section, we'll first explore Ajax and Fetch API for authentication and saving data. Then we'll work with WebSockets for adding real chat to our application. We'll also upload Ajax based files and we'll be rating images and viewing images galleries. Then we'll be sorting and filtering content. In this video, we'll explore Ajax and Fetch API for authentication and loading or saving of data. We'll start by integrating the backend server with our app. Then we'll create a login and sign up page. We'll use the Fetch API to authenticate the user and redirect them the chat app. Then we'll be able to add a new friend from the UI and load or save the friend list. In the last section, we we were able to do client side routing and we were able to create the support and about URIs. And then we were able to create groups of friends and also we were able to send images. To integrate backend server with our application, first we need to install the MongoDB community server and then set up a DB inside the MongoDB server. Then we need to get the db uri and put it in backend slash db slash dbjs. So here I have configured my own uri here. You need to configure your own db uri here, creating and uh, saving data. After that, you need to update the package JSON to add these dependencies. So these dependencies you can get in the project files from the tutorial and you need to update these dependencies and then do a npm install. After the npm install is complete, for running the application, earlier we used to use parcel, now we'll be using node space start.js. So start.js we have created here and this uh, uses the parcel bundler along with the backend server to launch them in the same URL. Once all of that done, then we need to create the resources. So this resources will be responsible for communicating with the backend APIs and writing the logic for handling the backend APIs in the resources.js. So here we have created a class and we have mapped the URLs that we have exposed as rest endpoints from our backend server. So we have auth URL, users URL, get friends URL and associations URL. Then we have a created a post request method. So this method takes in URL a JSON object which is the data to be posted and the response type for the API. So we are creating returning a new promise here and this promise will be resolved or rejected based on the response from the API. So we'll be using the fetch API. So fetch API takes the first parameter as the URL to which request should be made. So we are providing the URL here. Then the second parameter is the configuration of the request. So in the configuration, you can set headers, we can set body and the type of the request. So here we have set the type as post and we have set the body as the JSON object and send. And we are also sending the header as content type of application JSON because we are sending the JSON data in them. Then we are handling the response. So when we are using the fetch API and there is a 404 response from backend, the promise won't be rejected and it will still come to the then part. So we need to check whether the response is okay. So it will only be true when you get a 200 series uh, response like 200 or 200 something. So then we will get the response okay as true. So when this very okay is true, then we will resolve the uh, promise. Otherwise we will reject the promise. So similarly, we have implemented a get request and instead of the body, it takes in query params for the get request and we are handling the response in a similar fashion. Then we have five APIs like uh, authenticate, registry user, getting friends, getting all users and adding association. So we'll be using all these APIs to load and save data and also for authentication. So once this is done, we need to create an authentication service which will hold the authentication information for the user. So this is a very simple service and it has only three methods, set auth user, 
get auth user and is authenticated so we can set the authenticated user we can get the authenticated user and we can check whether the user is authenticated or not or the authentication has taken place or not so this authenticated user variable will only store the user id of the user so now let's go ahead and create our sign up and login page so for that we'll be creating a component my login so my login.js so here we are imported the resources because we'll be needing that for registration as well as authentication apis and then we have created the component in a similar fashion as we have done earlier the template for this uh, component has a form registration form so this form doubles up as a login form also for that we removing some of the input elements from this form and we have a go to login uh, anchor here so when the user clicks on this login they can go to the login page and when they are on login page and they click this they will come back to the sign up page or the registration page and we have we will track the login or sign up display by using this variable is login displayed we have also created an object of the resources class here so we have a connected callback method and in this we are rendering the component as well as we are attaching the event so we have a submit form callback attached to the submit form button event and uh, we have a toggle login attached to the go to login the anchor tag so let's first see the toggle login so here we are first toggling this variable and then if we have to display the login then we are removing input name input dob and input location from the registration page and we are setting the dynamic title as well as button text and the anchor text if we have to display the sign up then we are just resetting the inner html of this component and then calling the render again so that all the elements are rendered again and when we have to submit the form it based on whether the login was displayed or submit sign up was displayed it will parse the form values and then call the respective login user and register user functions so register user function calls the resources dot register user and on successful registration it will set the authenticated user and it will log in the user automatically and on login user it will call the authenticate function from the resources and it will on successful login it will again set the auth user in the authentication service and the it will redirect the user to the main app or the chat app so for setting the authentication service object we have this set auth service method here and we also have the static register method which will be used to register this component so let's go ahead and register this component and we'll first import it so we'll do my login dot register so once all of this is done we need to change the index.html so here we will remove this buzz app element because we don't want it to come at the first so we'll remove this and then we'll add a div which will be populated according to the authentication so when the user is authenticated it will be populated with this buzz app if the user is not authenticated it will be populated with the my login component so we have created a div with main content as the id so since we have set the style here of 100 view width and 100 view height let's go to our buzz app scss and remove this styling from here now we'll go to app.js and we'll change a lot of things here so we need to dynamically show the login and the buzz app element so we'll handle that logic here based on the router events so as you can see we have created object of the authentication service and on any tab we are subscribing to the router on the route on route change method so this method it will check if the route starts with slash app it will check if the authentication service is authenticated and if it is authenticated then only it will show the buzz app otherwise it will take you back to the login page so the show the buzz app so it is similar to what we had before just that we are setting the inner html here 
uh, of the main content and similarly so login page we are setting the inner html and we are also setting the auth service object this is just for login and authentication now we'll implement the fetching and saving of friends data so for that we'll first go to our friend store file and we make a quite few changes so first we have imported the resources and then we are also introducing all users so this will store all the users in the system so we have instead of having a load data method we have now two methods load friends data and load users data so load friends data will get the data of all the friends of the per present user and then load users data will get the all the users in the system then we have exposed few new apis so get all users this api will return all the users who are not the friend of present user and are in the system and then we have a api get any user by id so you can get any user in the system by id using this api and then we have add friend so this api will be used to add a new friend and this will call the resources dot add association add group we had earlier and now it will also call the resources dot add association with the user id association id as the group id and type group then again add user to group will also call the resources dot add association so these apis will be accessed from the sidebar so we need to go to the sidebar and make a few changes so here in sidebar we have introduced a new list which will display play the search results for list of all the users in the system then we have removed the connected callback and we'll be rendering the component only when the friend store is injected to the sidebar because all our data is dependent on the friend store now and uh, so here in the set friend store we are calling the render method instead of in the connected callback so we have removed the connected callback completely then we have a new function called render search results so this render search results is being called from the callback for search input so along with rendering the filtered friends will be rendering the filtered global users also so in that method we are rendering the users in the system who are not friends so here we will be displaying a plus icon which will be used to add the user as a friend so we are calling the add friend on that and also we can use the click on the icon to get the details of the user in the model as we used to get for the friends and then we have exposed the add friend api here which calls the friend store dot add friend now we need to go to my chat and make a small change there so here when we are rendering the group names we need to call the get any user by id because the members in the group may not be friend all the time so we need to get any user by id here okay so now let's go ahead and test our application so first we'll register an user so as you can see the user was registered and it automatically logged in so now we'll search for other users so we have one user automatically created in the system call super admin so we'll add super admin as a friend now as you can see the super admin is added now we'll add a group so this group will name as friends group 1 so now we'll be adding super admin to the friends group 1 so as you can see alice is automatically a member and then super admin is also a member so now let's create another user in the system i'll name it vishik since abhishek is logged in now let's add alice as a friend alice is added so now let's go back and log in as alice 
so as you can see abhishek is already added as a friend and super admin is also a friend so this data is now coming from the back end now we can add abhishek so since friends group only has alice and super admin now we can add abhishek also as a member of this